Okay, for tonight's homework, we're reviewing addition and subtraction of fractions and also multiplication of decimals. We're getting to the end of this unit and we want to make sure we can do all of these things. So let's review this here and we'll start with the addition. So three fifths plus one third. And the first thing is we need a common denominator. We have fifths here and we have thirds here that is not going to work. And you might be able to do this step in your head, but if you can't, you need to list out some multiples. So multiples of five. We have five, 10, 15, 20. That should be enough. Multiples of three. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, and there we go. 15 can be our common denominator. So can you put three fifths into fifteenths is the question. And can you put one third into fifteenths? And again, some of you are to the point where you can do this in your head, but others of you might need to write it out. So think about this. Five times what is 15? Five times three is 15. So I need to multiply this side by 3 thirds. And that's going to give me 9 fifteenths. Over here, 3 times what gives me 15? That's going to be 5 fifths. So 1 times 5 on the top is 5. And now we can add those together, 14 fifteenths. Okay, looking over at the next one, 2 ninths plus 2 thirds. We need a common denominator, and I can already tell you, 3, 6, 9. 9 is our common denominator. We're set there. So 2 ninths is okay. And can we make 2 thirds into ninths? And sometimes you can do that in your head, but if not, 2 thirds times what would give you ninths as a denominator? It's two-thirds times three-thirds, so there you have it, and there's your answer. <clears throat> for the next one, I'm not going to do this whole thing for you, but let's find the common denominator. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, that's enough. 3, 6, 9, 12, and look at that. We've got a common denominator, so you need, now need to put in twelfths. So can you convert three-fourths into twelfths? What is three-fourths into twelfths? What is two-thirds into twelfths? Think about how we just did it in the other places and figure that out and then add them together. And the next part, very similar except now we're just subtracting. So let's just do uh, the first one's easier. Let's do the next one. 7 eighths plus or minus 1 sixth. And again, if your multiplication is good, you can do this part in your head, but I'm going to list the multiples of 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 3 is 24. And I could keep going. That's probably enough. Multiples of 6. We have 6, 12, 18, 24. We've got to go all the way to 24 to find a common denominator. So 24 minus 24 is how we need to do this. How do we get 7 eighths into 24? Well, 8 times what equals 24? Thirds, 3 thirds. So 7 times 3, 21. Okay. And how about 1 sixth? We need to get that to 24. So 6 times what will give us 24? It's going to be 6 times 4, right? So 4 fourths. And now we're all set to subtract that. 21 minus 4 will give me 17. And that's the answer. And the next one looks a little bit different, but this is actually the easiest one you could do because we simply need to put 1 into 11 and anything over itself is 1 so 11 11 minus 3 11 and you can subtract that and that's your answer that's the easiest one and finally something new and again this is uh 
maybe a little bit advanced for fourth grader. I don't know if fourth graders really need to do this, but I think we can. So let's give it a try. We are multiplying decimals. 2 and 3 tenths, or 2.3, times 8. And to do this, simply just ignore the decimal at first. And how would you multiply this? Any way you want. I prefer multiplying it out like this. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times 20 is 160. And if I multiplied it like that, I'd have 184. 23 times 8 is 184. And I'm ignoring, for a moment, I am ignoring the decimal. But now, it's time to look at this decimal. We have one decimal. How many numbers are to the right of the decimal point? One. So from the right side, I move in one, put my decimal there, and the answer is 18 and 4 tenths. And if you think about it, that should be right, because 2 times 8 is about 16, so it's going to be a little bit more than 16. So there you have it. Now we have 3.6, or 3 and 6 tenths, times 4 tenths. I'll write it like this, but again, just multiply it any way you want at first. In fact, I like the lattice method, or some of you do at least, so why don't we do that? And you'll find you get 144. Now, this is where we have to do this trick. How many numbers are after the decimal point? We have one, two numbers after the decimal point. So from here, we move in two spots, one, two. And that's where our decimal point goes. OK, one more. I'm going to do all of these because this is new and some people are struggling with it. Uh, 91 hundredths times 5. So however you want to multiply that, just ignore the decimal point for a moment. <clears throat> And now we can think about the decimal point. All right, we have one, two numbers after the decimal point. There's no decimal here, so just one, two. So from the right side, we move in one, two. And there you have it. <clears throat> so uh, this last bit, again, a little bit more advanced and some people can do it. Some people, it's new, uh, just go slow. And the rest is review, but it's been a while, so hopefully uh, you got this. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for watching. Bye.